Today, let's chat about developing personas. This is for business, this is for uh, activism, anything you might be doing. If you're trying to sell something to someone, my suggestion is that you identify the target demographic and you develop personas for them. So that, that's what we're gonna be delving into. Now, when I say selling something, this could be selling yachts or real estate or cigarettes or uh, philosophy or selling yourself to a potential employer or finding a spouse or a, a boyfriend or girlfriend or a zer friend or whatever it is that you are trying to get in life. You're probably selling something as you go about pursuing your happiness. So these uh, these personas, these, these individuals that you're going to create, these are imaginary uh, people that kind of bring together the characteristics that are most common in your target demographic. So I'll, I'll use the example of scented candles to start with. Who is inter interested in scented candles? What gender do you think most people are who purchase scented candles for their own use? Uh, are, are the people who purchase them for their own use primarily men or women? Well, then let me, let me ask you this. Are most scented candles that are purchased purchased by the end user or someone who is purchasing it to give as a gift to someone else? And the reason I'm using this example is I enjoy a couple flavors of scented candles, but I certainly am not really into it. Like if I walk into a room, I'm like, oh, that smells good. And I'm like, yeah, there's vanilla or caramel or something like that. Yeah, that's good. But I'm not a huge end product user of them. Typically, I think most people would say women uh, would be the, the largest end user of that item. However, if women don't want to spend 14 or 24 or $84 for a candle, they just don't want to treat themselves to that, then maybe that is something that they are given as a gift by people who care about them. And if those are the people who are giving them to the, to the gal, then that's who you're trying to reach. So maybe if we were candle, scented candle makers and sellers or, or vendors, uh, maybe we would have several different personas that we would develop as our potential clients. So one of them might be a woman. This is the end user, perhaps. And is she going to live in the city or is she going to live in the country? Is she going to be a renter? Is she going to be a homeowner? Is she wealthy? Is she poor? Is she middle class? What are her other hobbies? Is it likely that if a woman whose other hobbies are rock climbing, weightlifting, boxing, uh, is this the type of gal who is probably buying lavender-infused scented candles? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. We kind of have to, as we're looking at these things, we have to set aside the political correctness or not of things and really look at what, what's really happening because this is, this is sales. This is the real deal in the world. So maybe we come up with a persona of a 45-ish uh, white woman who is married to her second husband. She has two children from the first marriage, one from the second marriage. She has an average income of $75,000 household income. Um, she, it's a two-vehicle family. Uh, they live in the suburbs. And we're kind of going down the line and thinking, who exactly is this demographic? Who is this persona? Uh, who is this person who represents a large segment of our, our purchaser? Uh, who, who is this? So that gal is one of them, and we might give her a name. We might call her Mary. And so as we develop our marketing, our advertising, and our sales strategies, we need to do so with Mary in mind. And it's not a bad idea. As you're writing down this paragraph or these bullet points describing this persona, add a photograph. Go and search on uh, images on, on DuckDuckGo or Brave or, or uh, Pixabay or whatever. Go find a photograph of a woman who is, you know, what you think Mary might look like. Scented candle enjoying Mary. And have that image of her and look at that image and look at the description of her and think, how do I want to appeal to her? Would I want to appeal to her by wearing a dirty Carhartt jacket 
and a cowboy hat? Um, well, maybe she would like the ruggedness of this. But if she's married now happily and doesn't want to go through another divorce and go through all this, eh, she might not be in the looking at other men phase. Maybe it should be a trusted woman who is talking to her, someone her age, maybe someone who she looks up to because they are wealthier or older or younger or poorer or whatever. Thinking about all of these things and writing them down in her persona is a smart thing to do. Now, we're candle purveyors, so we're going to also do this for another demographic. Let's do one for the guy who is purchasing it for his gal. Is this guy going to be rich or poor, old or young, white or black or Hispanic or some other ethnicity or color or whatever? Is he going to be probably a mechanic or a stockbroker? Or if we're going to round those, all the different thousands of professions, if we're going to kind of say, is he a, a white collar professional or is he a blue collar, get it done kind of guy? Uh, we're going to really look at this guy. And again, political incorrectness is awesome because it's only going to be your eyes who sees this. Uh, don't worry about what the public's going to think. Really write down who you think this person is who is going to be buying a candle as a gift. Get a good description, get a photograph so that you think, give him a name, maybe we'll call him Bob. Then, as we did with Mary, as you try to sell to her, you are going to think about and market and such. You are going to think about what, what would this these two people like? And there's going to be some marketing that you do that you know isn't going to reach Bob, did I say? <laughs> it's not going to reach Bob, but it will reach Mary. And there's going to be some stuff that you know, oh, Bob would love this muscle car manly weightlifting thing, and eh, Mary wouldn't so much. So you're not trying to get Mary to look at that marketing. You're trying to get Bob to look at it. So you've created these two personas uh, along with me for this candle making thing. W what would a third be? Yeah, and I I'm not going to tell you. you got to come up with this on your own. I don't know for a candle maker. Um, maybe you have two more uh personas that you need to develop for that particular business. <clears throat> I don't know what your exact number is, um, but it's a good idea when you're doing personas to do at least two or three or four uh, that represent the 80%, the 80% of the people who are purchasing your product. Well, now let's turn to spreading the word of liberty. That's an interest of mine is humanitarianism. Uh, some people call it humanitarian. Uh, thought. Some people call it voluntarism. Uh, my specific area of interest is, is in human beings having more freedom, more, more liberty in their lives. And that's my area of interest. And that's, that's who I want to, to market to. I want to market to people who would be interested in that. So as I develop personas for this area, who do we think might be interested in philosophy, moral philosophy? And, and what else is it about my philosophy? What's another attribute of my product that I should be thinking about? Well, usually people who come to believe in humanitarianism do so, libertarian thinking, do so with a very structured, rational, logical type uh, structure. It's not something you just, you wake up one morning and you say, I feel like being a libertarian. No. If you're going to go on your feels, you're probably going to end up being a, a sustainability evangelist or a um, practitioner of new agey stuff or I'm woke and I feel that it makes me better as a person. You're probably not going to be going for philosophy that requires like philosophy 101 is logic. So if, if we're going for somebody who's interested, who's going to be interested in philosophy, we are not going for a feels based person. We're going for a logic-based person. So if, if we're going to look at professions first, what professions would uh, are professions that have really logic-based people? And, and it wouldn't be art, probably. It wouldn't be uh, people who paint beautiful paintings that I love looking at. You know, they're more of a feels-type person. That's, that's their mentality. So who, who is a, a rational person? Well, maybe an attorney, an engineer, a programmer. Um, physicians, uh, airline pilots. These are people who are very, you know, this is the, this is the formula. Two plus two equals four. And while I really wished that it equaled five, 
I'm doing the math here, and it does not equal five. It equals four, and I'm okay to go with that. Who is this person? What other professions? What have, who, who have I missed? Well, interestingly enough, if you go to a humanitarian convention, a, a voluntarist convention, anarcho-capitalist, one of these conventions, you can almost walk up to the people there and say, hi, I'm Shepard. What kind of engineer are you? And they're going to say, well, how did you know? I'm a software engineer. It, it, probably 50% or more, maybe 80, nah, 50 or 60% probably of the people who attend conventions are engineers of some sort. They're these rational, systematic thinking kind of folks. So as I build my persona of a person who I might want to market liberty to, maybe I should think about software engineers. Maybe I should think about mechanical engineers. Maybe not civil engineers, because they tend to have a, a, a bias, which I don't blame them for, but they're probably going to get a job associated with governments or the organizations that are closely related to governments. And, and that's a different type of thinking than humanitarian thinking. It's, I'm not saying it's good or bad. It's just a different kind of person who's drawn to that. So if we're looking for computer programmers, our most software engineers, computer programmers, are these people generally men or women? I don't know. You might know this. I don't know. Well, yeah, I do know the answer. It's probably a guy. Is it probably a guy who is white or black or Hispanic or Middle Eastern or Indian or uh, Filipino? Well, there's a wide variety. So maybe I should be thinking, how, how am I going to be marketing to these people? Who are they? How am I going to market to them? There are Filipino uh, software engineers who I could market to and help them become humanitarians. However, is that, is that who I should be targeting? Do, do I have a good connection with these people? They're from a very different culture. I've never been to the Philippines. Maybe those people are not the ones who I should be creating a persona about because that's not who I'm going to be marketing to. So maybe I should narrow it down and say, in the United States, political jurisdiction, that's where I'm going to be marketing, who are most engineers, programmers, uh, software engineers. Well, they're mostly white men, or I would say maybe second would, I don't know, I would guess would be Indian men from India. Um, that's my guess, just based on telephone calls I've had. Maybe I'm talking with people who aren't in the United States, but I, I think that would be a pretty safe guesstimate. 70% at least are white males. And what age are these guys? I'm thinking maybe 20 to 40. Uh, they're older engineers. They're younger engineers. But usually you wouldn't have your degree and get going on a with a, a company like, uh, I don't know, Facebook, unless you have a degree because they would have that strange structure in place. Now, there are plenty of brilliant 14-year-olds who are writing code. Um, but I'm, I'm saying generally, yeah, I'm going to say 20 to 40. Um, so 20 to 40 white guy. Is he probably married or single or dating? Well, could be any of the above. Um, what is the stereotypical computer programmer white guy from 20 to 40? Is, is that the social person who we think, man, I wish I was like those guys. They always go out and pick up all the hot gals. Well, no, <laughs> that's, that's not really what they're known for. Uh, they have much more pressing matters at hand. Their Their way of thinking isn't that that way of thinking that is generally good at uh, finding female companionship. So there are a lot of single, perhaps frustrated, but single white guys from 20 to 40 who are interested in rational thinking. Though that's, that's our target. So as we're, as we're developing this persona, and when we're being politically incorrect here, we're making enemies just by making this video, I'm sure. So we're looking for a, a 20 to 40 white guy who's uh, single and looking, but for some reason women are just too shallow and they don't want to talk about intelligent stuff and they're not working out. They probably like gaming, uh, computer gaming that is, not gambling necessarily. Probably wouldn't like gambling because it's just rationally, it's a stupid thing to do. Why would I want to, the odds are blah, 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 according to blah, 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 law. And blah. like these guys are brilliant. They're not going to be out there wasting their money on lottery tickets or <laughs> gaming in Nevada. 
So they are interested in gaming. That's how they get their social interaction. Many of them, this is our persona. And I don't know what we're going to call our, our person, um, whatever name we want to give them, just Jack. Uh, so Jack is, uh, we, we already have these certain characteristics. What else do we want to say about Jack? How, how does Jack get his information? Does he, does he watch CNN, CNBC, Fox News? Does he get his quote unquote news from the conventional press like television? Or does he get it from Odyssey uh, or some other video channel, video uh, platform? Uh, does he get it from social media? Do, what kind of social media does, does uh, Jack look at? What does he enjoy? Does he, does, is he a Facebook guy or is he an Instagram guy or is he a, a twat, uh, Twitch or something like that kind of guy? Uh, he probably knows that there's such a thing as Discord. He probably has very strong opinions about whether Signal or Telegram is a better messaging platform. And <laughs> I can't believe you're still using regular text that comes on your Android. <laughs> this is what this person's thinking, this particular persona that we're coming up with. Who else? If we move on from this persona, who else is interested in philosophy, rational thinking? What's another persona? What's another target demographic to whom we could direct our message? So once you think about that person, go through the whole process again. We won't do it right now. And then think of a third person. Let's go through the whole process with them. Is it, is it likely that someone who comes to their conclusions based on feelings is going to be a good person that we should target in our marketing efforts? Probably not. We're looking for thinking-based people. Really contemplate this. Do some more research about personas. Hopefully, as you start developing these just for fun, you'll come up with a few for each thing it is that you are trying to sell. Uh, hopefully, this helps you. It certainly helped us in our uh, day job business. And uh, I look forward to helping more with content production and outreach uh, in the humanitarian slash voluntary space. Thank you for taking the time to watch this, and I hope it makes your life richer. If it does, yep, you guessed it. I'd love it if you'd subscribe, share this with someone who you think would be good at selling liberty, and uh, I'll see you soon.